If you are a filmmaker or already any creative person, a website is a great way to display your work. Now, I've been meaning to update my site for years, so when Wix, who have sponsored this video, got in touch and asked if I wanted to use their platform, I was keen. The nice thing about Wix is that you can design the website for free, test it all out, and then if you're happy with it, you can upgrade to remove the ads and choose your own domain name. So we start by selecting the type of site. You can have an online store, a blog, but I'm going for a portfolio. I'm definitely going to choose the editor since I'll be customizing everything. And then we can choose a theme, which is basically our starting point. For most sites, it's easier to adapt a theme to what you need rather than starting from scratch. But before I actually do start working on anything, I'm actually going to look for some inspiration. And that's tip number one. The idea is just to think back to some sites that we have personally enjoyed. Like I remember liking Chance's site and how it's nice and minimal and how everything is centrally aligned. Another good way to find inspiration is just to search for design portfolios since the designers usually do have the best websites. And we're just looking at the fonts, the colors, and the general layout, basically just anything we can learn from. It's also important to look at other people in your field. So if you take photos, have a look at the top photographers' sites. One thing I noticed that most of the filmmakers had was that they had examples of their work right on the front page. So that's tip number two. Know what people are looking for on your site and then make it really easy to find that. In my case, the homepage doesn't need lots of text because I'm not a writer. So maybe a grid like this would work, embedding all of the videos right next to each other. And then as far as the specifics of the design, I really like the way that this site has its menus gray to begin with, and then they turn black when you hover your mouse over them. So I'll probably steal that idea. So we've got some ideas, so now we can actually start making our site. I started with the pages, the home page will have my work, then we'll add a contact page so potential clients can immediately and clearly see how to get in touch, and then a bio so the site has a bit of personality to it. I might as well change the name of the home page to work since that's all that will be there. Now I want to change the color of the text on the menus. So on Wix we just click on the paintbrush whenever we want to change the design options and then we go to customize. So I wanted it to be gray by default and then have it change to almost black when the mouse hovers over it and then use the same color for when it's selected. Okay so this is tip number three. Test it out often. So I'll just publish the site and for now I'll just choose a free domain and we'll be able to upgrade that later but the idea is just to make sure it does what we expected it to do and in this case it does so we can move on. Let's change the obvious stuff, the text. It's all pretty intuitive, you just kind of click and drag. It's basically as you'd expect. We can go to the toolbar to delete anything we don't need and then I'm going to the plus sign to add my own logo image. I'll drag it to the top and scale it down then use the arrow keys to position it exactly. So that's a good start for the home page. So now let's go to the contact page and add our contact form. So again, we can choose from a couple of different presets, knowing that we'll be able to customize each thing later on. So I'll just drag and drop it and then scale it to fit. Then we'll click on the paintbrush to customize the overall layout of the design, the colors, that kind of thing. Basically everything except for fonts which I'll think about later. So next let's update the footer, which will sit at the bottom of the site along with the social media links. We can type in the links for the different profiles and then change the order if we want to, use different logo styles, they have a couple of different options, or we can even design our own and upload them. Basically everything is customizable. That said, I think I'm happy with these light gray ones, so all I need to do is test it out to make sure that the links are going to the right places. Okay, so next let's go back to the main event, the home page. I'm going to remove these sample videos and add my own. So typically this main video spot would be for a showreel, but it doesn't have to be a showreel. Really, it's just anything that shows off what you can do. But along with that, it should also represent the kind of work we want to be doing, which is tip number four. If your website is full of wedding videos you've shot, then you probably won't get hired for a big 
commercial project. If your site is full of corporate interviews, then you probably won't get hired for any creative narrative projects. So it's really important that the work that you see on this on your site is at least similar to the kind of thing that you want to be working on in the future. So let's leave the homepage there for now and get started on the bio. I'll reorganize things a bit, delete things I don't need, and then add my own image. That's tip number five. Make sure your images are really strong. I think it's worth spending some time finding and shooting the right images, and that includes the video thumbnails and really every single image on the site. So for now, I'm not gonna write anything. I'll just leave the default text, at least until I'm happy with the overall layout. And that's tip number six. I find it really helpful to start with the big decisions, like the layout, and then work on the little details like the font and spending time writing the actual content later. So now that we've made some more progress, it's always good to do some more testing. We can try out each page and zoom out to make sure it'll still work on larger monitors. And then we can switch over to the mobile view and check that that still works. So at this stage, we've got a pretty standard site. It does the job, but for me, it's a little bit boring. It still kind of looks like a template site. So first I'm gonna go through and try out some different fonts. I'll switch the header and menus to lowercase, then scroll through until I find a font that I like. I'm thinking the classic Helvetica might be a good option for the main body of the site, and I'll definitely change the spacing so the letters are a bit closer together. I'm also gonna add another set of social media links since they aren't hugely visible at the bottom of the site. Now, I really like the look of white text on a dark background, so I'm trying out some different images from my Instagram in the header. After trying out a couple of different images, I'm basically thinking that it looks a bit too busy, especially on the home page. So I think I'll stick with the blank header. So now is probably a good time to upgrade my site so those Wix banners will go away and so I can use a better domain name. They have a few different options at different prices. I ended up going with the unlimited one so there's no cap on the bandwidth. Okay, so once the site is upgraded, I'm gonna go back to editing because I wanna try out the centrally aligned look that I got the idea from Chance the Rapper's website. So I'll start repositioning everything and really that's tip number seven. There's no harm in experimenting. You can always undo if you preferred how it looked before. So I ended up actually removing my name, which is a bit risky, but I figure it's in the URL anyway, so it's not necessarily needed. I'm also having second thoughts about the fonts on the menu. So I end up just keep changing it back and forth. That's kind of how it goes. So at this stage, there are a few things we could do to spice things up a bit. We could add image slideshows. That might be nice on an About Me page. Or we could add a light box, which would pop up encouraging people to watch your reel or to sign up for an email list if you're into that kind of thing. We could also add animations, for example, on the menus so they fade in or slide in, but I'm gonna avoid most of that because I do just wanna keep things as minimal as possible. But even so, I will freeze the header, which basically means that people can always reach the menu even if they are scrolling down. So let's finish that home page. Now, I'd rather not have this white background on the header. So I'm gonna actually remove the header and the footer from just this page, and then we can have the video completely filling the screen. Now if I recreate the menu by copying it and then changing the colors to white so they still show up on the darker background, as well as doing the same with the logo, then once we've positioned things and lined it up, it basically looks like that white banner only appears on the other two pages. And for the last part of the home page, I then just added some more of my work, basically just to show that I've worked on more than one project. And then last of all, I just have to write the text for the About Me section, trying to avoid cliches wherever possible. And then I just have to double check everything. So that includes the hyperlinks, making sure they all go to the right places, as well as making sure that I'm actually receiving the messages from the contact form. So to finish, I just wanna make some comparisons between my old and new websites. So firstly, on my old site, it takes at least two clicks to watch any of my videos and you have to kind of find them a little bit. Whereas my new site has them front and center and you can start watching them within one click. That's important. 
as far as the design on my old site i think the logo is way too big i really don't like the font and it's actually pixelated as well the about me page doesn't actually have enough writing to fit with the image which is just a screenshot from one of my videos and the whole page feels off balance since the only thing happening on the right hand side of the page is this search bar that really isn't needed on a four page site there's nothing to search for and here's the new about me page which i think looks much cleaner and much more balanced and lastly the contact page on the old site is just ugly i much prefer the new one but i guess the weird thing is when you look at the finished site we can't see all the different versions that came before it or we can't see the time that we spent choosing fonts and you know deciding whether to move things a little bit left a little bit right if anything it looks so simple that it could have been put together in 10 minutes but that's often how it goes with creative work we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort convincing everyone that it happened effortlessly my name is simon cade this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.